So Biden's obviously in a lot of trouble right now. His presidency isn't quite going to plan. His approval ratings are at absolute rock bottom and he keeps making gaffes and mistakes on public TV, falling over and in general, just not putting himself out there as the best presidential figure. To make matters worse, things really aren't too great in the United States right now either. There's economic turmoil, gas prices are sky high, house prices are sky high too, inflation all over the place is soaring and there are major problems with Russian and Chinese tensions that don't seem to be going away either. To say that things aren't going well wouldn't be hyperbolic at all and the midterms are coming up. The Democrats are a political party, of course they want to perform well so they have to do something differently. Now the big thing that they've chosen to focus on over the last week at least is this idea that a recession is here or it's almost here and that the data is starting to look bad and that people are going to be finding themselves poorer as the future comes on as well. Of course, in early 2022, throughout the first quarter, the first three months of the year, GDP growth for the United States was negative. Consumer sentiment was crashing every time we got new data and the housing market was starting to slow down. The White House, though, has been fighting back and over the last week, or actually the last few days even, they put out two big statements, big articles, telling everyone exactly how they see it. Today, we're of course going to have a look at them. We're going to see exactly what the White House is saying. The only problem with all of this is that they are lying straight to your face. So just a few days ago on the 21st of July, the White House put out this article here titled, How do economists determine whether the economy is in a recession? Now, of course, that title doesn't sound too bad and it really doesn't seem too provocative either, but the content of this article is really rather worrying and it shows the White House coming out swinging. This first paragraph here really puts everything into context. What is a recession? While some people maintain that two consecutive quarters of falling GDP constitutes a recession, that is neither the official definition nor the way economists evaluate the state of the business cycle. Based on the data, it's unlikely that the decline in GDP in the first quarter of this year, even if followed by another GDP decline in the second quarter, indicates a recession. Now the White House just said a few things there and they showed their true colors too. They're basically trying to convince you to change your definition of a recession, which is something that if you've studied even the slightest bit of economics, even at the most basic level, if you're 15 and you've done a little bit of school, you know what a recession is. It's two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. I learned it when I was 16 at school and you probably did as well. And that is the trigger or the official point that most economists use to determine whether or not a recession is here. Now, what does it really mean? Well, it means that economic activity has been falling for a sustained period of time. The White House, though, are basically saying that that isn't true. They're specifically saying, while some people maintain this idea, that is an outright lie because almost everyone maintains that idea, not some at all. The second thing that the White House said is that even if we get two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, it still won't count as a recession. Now that goes some way in explaining why they're trying to change your definition of a recession because this new GDP data comes out on Thursday and it seems like they're trying to get out ahead of it because they expect it to be negative again and they expect this to be the start of the Great American Recession. This is frankly a sad indictment of this democratic administration because instead of trying to actually improve the situation of the economy for its citizens, they're trying to gaslight their citizens into thinking it's better than it really is. Now the rest of this article is really quite long and wordy and it isn't too interesting. It starts looking at the National Bureau of Economic Research, the organization which does officially declare a recession in the US and how they specifically go on to decide whether or not there's a recession and there's nothing outright wrong with the things they say regarding that statement. It is true that the MBER uses a very specific criteria to declare a recession and it's also true that they are the arbiters of whether or not a recession is here but another thing the White House is conveniently ignoring is the fact that they are always months late to declare a recession, usually by around about a year, meaning that they look purely at stuff in the past. And just because they don't necessarily say a recession has started on Thursday doesn't mean in a year's time they won't turn around and say, yeah, actually, the recession started in July of 2022. That's exactly what happened during the COVID recession, which took them 10 months to finally go back and say, oh, yeah, it started 10 months ago. After that bit though, the White House goes on to continue to try and prove that the economy is actually really strong and that you're just mad if you feel like you're poorer now than you were last year. 
All of these indicators have exhibited strong growth in the US economy since the start of the pandemic and have continued to expand through the first half of this year. The truth is though that people are poorer, salaries are smaller than they were a year ago in real terms, people have less money in their pocket, they have less money in their bank account at the end of each week. Companies and businesses are making fewer profits than they were before and people know exactly what's happening. The White House has just resorted to gaslighting people in broad daylight saying actually the data says that right now you're poorer than you were before regardless of what your bank account or your wallet tells you. Finally, for this specific article, the White House then goes on to talk about the unemployment rate. Finally, although the unemployment rate is not on the committee's list, the fact that it has held at a historically low 3.6% in the past four months also has bearing on that recession question. Now this bit here is in my opinion particularly egregious because they admit right off the bat that unemployment data isn't important when going on to recognize whether or not there's a recession, but they're still using it to prove to you that there isn't a recession. They're also cherry picking this unemployment data in the first place, which is of course extremely low. They are looking purely at the unemployment figure. They are ignoring the super poor labor force participation rate. And they're also ignoring the ridiculous amounts of people who are having to get second jobs just to get by these days. The perfect example to disprove this idea put out by the White House is the fact that over the last month, the number of people with jobs in the United States declined, despite the fact that the total number of jobs in the United States increased. The only way this is possible is if people have to take up second jobs because one job just isn't paying the bills. The White House is outright ignoring this fact, hoping that you don't watch a video like this that goes into the details and hoping that they can gaslight you into thinking they're doing a good job. Unfortunately, the dishonesty doesn't stop there because three days later, the White House put out this article here, looking over an interview that they did with Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who came out and said the exact same things that the White House wanted her to say, that the US is not in a recession. If the technical definition is two quarters of contraction, you're saying that's not a recession. That's not the technical definition. There's an organization called the National Bureau of Economic Research that looks at a broad range of data in deciding whether or not there is a recession. And most of the data that they look at right now continues to be strong. I would be amazed if they would declare this period to be a recession, even if it happens to have two quarters of negative growth. We have a very strong labor market when you are creating almost 400,000 jobs a month. That is not a recession. She literally just went on to parrot the exact same points that the White House made a few days earlier. She's saying that everything is fine, the data is strong, the labor market is really strong too, and so there is no recession. Later on in the article, she goes on to say that GDP declines are actually good and they're needed to tame inflation, which is actually the first truthful thing to come out of the White House so far, but fundamentally, that is opposed to her earlier statements but this idea that she's putting out there that economic stagnation is needed to damage inflation to bring it back down to acceptable levels goes fundamentally against her idea that there is no economic stagnation in the first place. It's one or the other. You can't have both. Now, of course, the White House is getting loads of flack for this. They are struggling with some awful bad press in the first place. And this is just adding fuel to the fire. Everyone is calling out their hypocrisy and outing these pieces and these articles, these publications as what amounts to propaganda. Now the White House is on damage control, putting out fact-checked articles attempting to gaslight everyone about their gaslighting, but the damage is already done. Their true colors have been shown time and time again before, and they've just been shown again. Today, for this video, I'll leave you with the Biden administration itself gaslighting you in real time in video form, telling you that the sky is red and up is down because there's no better way for me to show you just how insane and dishonest and disingenuous this all is than to let these liars show you themselves. National Bureau of Economic Research. They also did not declare a recession in 2008 until December, that's 12 months after the recession had already been in place in the U.S. economy. But based on what the president said earlier, have his economic advisors told him they also don't think a recession is likely? And what is exactly the White House's definition of a recession? Again, we don't, we don't, def I'm not going to define it from here. I'm just going to leave it to the NBER as, as we have stated of how they define uh, recension, okay, recession. Okay, so declare one until they have declared it one. I'm just saying? saying that we're just not going to define it. We use the indicators that the NBER, uh, uh, the Nas National Bureau of Economic Research have, have used. We've mentioned that a few times. Um, but going to your question about how sometimes it's late, look, 
I think the what we're not even I think what the point that we're trying to make here is that we have a strong labor market, which you don't normally see in a recession. Uh, that is very uncommon uh, to see that. Uh, when you see an average of uh, 400,000 jobs created per month, when you see an unemployment at 3.6, which is historical, that does not uh, that does not define a recession. And so that's what we point you to. That's what we're looking at is how the economy is currently in this moment. And the reason why is because of the work uh, that this president has done, because of the American Rescue Plan and turning back on uh, an economy uh, that was in crisis when he walked in, when 20 million people were uh, were collecting unemployment uh, insurance, benefit insurance. And now we have a historic, uh, historic uh, uh, job, uh, job creation. And so that is important. And let's not forget about the bipartisan uh, infrastructure law that as well that has helped create jobs. Okay. I just want to be clear, though. So we're not going to hear the White House say, if there is a recession, that there is one. And until the National Bureau of Economic Research has declared it one? What I'm saying is that uh, the definition, that uh, the technical definition, uh, and Secretary Yellen said this yesterday on, the, on Meet the Press, is the National Bureau of Economic Research uh, that looks at a broad range of data in deciding whether or not there is a recession. And most of that data that they look at uh, right now uh, continues to be strong. So who, that's who we look at. Uh, I'm not going to get into a hypothetical right now. We don't, we don't do that, but we're using that um, as, as clearly an indicator and why, and they lay out uh, uh, how, how they get to that, how they get to that definition. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. If you want to join our exclusive community, then check out our Patreon. You get access to our Discord server and extra content like access to my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. Also, make sure to check out the link in the description to Masterworks. It can help you protect your portfolio against market turmoil through fractional shares of art from world famous artists. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets falling every week. There's also a link in the description to iTrust Capital, which helps you to invest in crypto through your tax advantaged IRA, which could literally save you thousands. If you, like me, think crypto going down is a buy-in opportunity, then now is the perfect time to join iTrust Capital. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.